Today we're going to talk about how to solve equations and it's helpful to think of equations in terms of a balance beam. So I have a very, an example of a very simple equation. It's still an equation because it's got an equal sign here and it's saying that x is equal to 6 and it's represented by a balance beam in that the equal sign is kind of like the middle of the balance beam telling you that everything on this side of the equation is the same as everything on this side of the equation, that they have the same value. And I can show you, using our little balance beam, you'll notice that I've got a mystery box right here. I don't know exactly what's inside. That's why it's got an X on it. So I'm going to put it over here on the left side of the balance beam. Then I'm going to put six, six ones over on the right side to represent six. All of a sudden, voila, it becomes perfectly balanced, which means that x is equal to 6. Now, when we are trying to do what we call solving equations, we are trying to figure out exactly what x is equal to. And, of course, it would be way too easy if they were always given to us like this, in the form of x is equal to 6. Unfortunately for us, they're not usually that straightforward. Equations are usually more complicated than this. And I'm going to give an example of what such an equation might look like using our balance beam. So I'm going to use the balance beam to illustrate a model of how to solve this equation. Remember that to solve the equation, I'm trying to figure out exactly what x is equal to. And right now, I'm going to also put what it would look like on paper if we were trying to solve it. So 2x plus 5 is equal to 9. So our goal is to figure out what that x is equal to in the equation. I'm going to build a model of what this equation looks like. So remember that the equal sign is like the middle of our balance beam. So everything that is on the left-hand side of my equal sign needs to go right here on the left side of my balance beam. So because it's 2x, I'm going to put 2x's. I also have 5 over on the left-hand side, so I'm going to put 5 1's and 5. And then the right-hand side of my equation, so this side of my equal sign, tells me what goes on the right-hand side of my balance beam. So I'm going to put 9 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you'll notice that now it's perfectly balanced. So remember, my goal, I don't care what 2x plus 5 is equal to. What I want to know is what just plain x by itself is equal to. And right now, now some of us are very, very good at math and we can figure this out in our heads really quickly, but other of us, not so much. We need a little bit of extra support. So I've got a problem though, because the X isn't by itself. Now if that X were alone, it would balance out on the balance beam and I could just see how much it weighed. But because it's not, I'm going to do something that's called isolating the variable. I'm going to isolate the variable. That means I'm gonna get it all by its lonesome over here on the left hand side. So right now, this X has a bunch of buddies with him. He's got another X and he's got five little one friends also. So we've got to get rid of all of that extra baggage so that we can figure out what just X is equal to. I'm going to start by getting rid of this five because it's just kind of hanging out by itself and that's the easiest thing to get rid of. And to get rid of a positive five, I'm going to subtract 5 from the left-hand side of my equation. This is what that would look like on paper. I'm going to write that I'm going to take away 5. And taking away that 5 is what we call the inverse. Inverse is a fancy word for opposite. A way that I remember what it means is that inverse sounds an awful lot like the word reverse. And we know that reverse also means going backwards. So by using a negative 5 to get rid of this positive 5, I'm using what's called inverse operations. That is, the subtraction is the inverse or the opposite of that 
addition, or that plus 5. So this is what it would look like on paper. I'm going to add a minus 5. On the model, I'm going to just pull these 5 right off of here. 2, 3, 4, and 5. So now I'm left with just those two x's. This is what it would look like on paper. So I had a plus 5. I added, I took away 5. So now that plus 5 is gone. Now that 2x is still there on the left-hand side of my balance beam. I got rid of the positive 5 by adding a negative 5 or by taking away 5. But the 2x's are still there. Now you're going to notice what happened to my balance beam. Well, obviously, it's not in balance anymore because I took away 5 from the left-hand side of my equation, but I didn't bother to do it to the right side of my equation. So that's what I'm going to do next to keep it in balance. I'm going to remove. because The whole point of an equation is keeping it in balance. So if I just take off 5 from the other side, voila, now it's back in check. So on paper, that's what it would look like over here. If I subtract 5 from the left side of my equal sign, those of us that are visual might also sometimes like to draw a little line right here through the middle of the equal sign just to let us know this is everything that's going on on the left side of the equation. This is everything that's going on on the right side of the equation or the balance beam, depending on how you think about it. So I took 5 off of the left side of my balance beam, which I did here, left me with two x's. But to get it back into balance, I also had to take that 5 away from the right side of my balance beam, a.k.a. the right side of my equal sign. So 9 minus 5 left me with 4. So I've got two x's on one side of my balance beam. I've got 4 on the other side. So now two x's are equal to 4. Now my variable is still not what we call isolated. I know that two x's weigh 4, but I want to know what just 1x equals. And I know that we are all really smart people, and we're sitting at home yelling and we're saying, oh, well, duh, I know what x is equal to. But I'm showing you kind of the, I guess we'll call it the training wheels version of how to solve an equation, because pretty soon we're going to have some that we aren't going to be able to just solve in our heads like this. So what I need to do now with this x is think about for a second, what operation is going on with this variable? So when that two is sitting next to the x, that means multiplication. Hopefully we remember that when a number is sitting next to a variable, that means they're being multiplied. So two times our mystery number is equal to four. Just like we used subtraction to do the opposite of this addition, we're also gonna use inverse operations to undo or to get rid of that second x. So what I'm going to do is take those two x's. So I've got 2 times x. The opposite or inverse of multiplying by 2 is to divide by 2. So I'm going to take these two x's and I'm actually going to divide them into two groups. So if I divide them into two groups, I'm left with just one x. Because if I take those two x's, divide it into two groups, I'm just left with an x. Of course, uh-oh, oh wait, oops, my x kind of went over there, didn't it? I meant for it to go over there. <laughs> okay, so still out of balance. Now, I divide, because I divided this half of my balance beam by 2, but I didn't divide this half of my balance beam by 2. So, I need to do the same thing over here. 4 divided into 2 groups would be 2 because 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now I have my variable completely isolated. Oh, oops. So I know that x balances out with 2. Let's work one more example, one that is a little different. Get rid of all this writing here. And we'll do one more example, just so we can make sure that we're all on the same page here. I'm just going to create another. It's 
So now I've got the equation 3x plus 6 is equal to 6. Actually, nope, that's not what I want to do. I want to change that equation. Thank you for your patience here at home, viewers. I actually want to change that. And here we go. Okay, so now I've got the equation 3x minus 4 is equal to 5. Over here again on the right hand side, I'm going to show what it would look like if I were solving this equation on paper. I'm going to go ahead and make a model first. Remember the equal sign goes right here in the middle. So I've got three x's that I'm going to pull over here. So three x's minus four. So instead of the little positive one boxes, I'm going to use these little negative one balloons to represent negative four. On the right hand side of my equation is going to go 5 and it's going to be positives because this is a positive 5. Notice here I am in balance. You'll recall that my ultimate goal when I'm solving an equation is to isolate the variable. That means I want to get this one x to be all by himself. But he's got all kinds of junk going on here. He's got two other x's, he's got a negative 4, there's all kinds of stuff right now. So I can't figure out what just one x by itself weighs because there's so much other stuff going on. So I'm going to get rid of some of this extra stuff. So one thing I can do, we recall from previous examples of positive and negative numbers that a positive and a negative cancel each other out. So if I want to actually cancel out or get rid of these four negatives, I can just add four positives over here to the left hand side of my equation. On paper, it would look like this. Minus four, the opposite, or remember, our fancy word for opposite is inverse. The inverse of minus four would be plus four. So that minus four and that plus four are actually canceled out now. So we can kind of pretend for a moment that these guys aren't even here anymore. Because poof, positive and a negative four are gonna all cancel each other out. So all I'm left with right now is three x's on the left-hand side of my equation or of my balance beam. Unfortunately, you can tell now it's out of whack. It's out of balance. It's because I added four to the left-hand side of my equation, but I didn't add four to the right-hand side. So let me do that. Voila, I'm back into balance. So let me add four to my paper version over here. Five plus four, of course, is nine. Remember, some of us might like to draw a straight line through the equal sign to remind us this is one side, this is the other. So now I've got, and of course I kind of scribbled a little bit here, but I've got three x's now over here. So this means three times x. Well, the opposite of multiplying by x, or inverse of multiplying by x, is to divide by three. The opposite of multiplying by three is to divide by three. So I'm going to take these three x's and divide them into three groups. So I'm going to take one, put it over here, one, put it over here, oh, oops. So now I've taken those three x's and I've split them up so that I've just got one x left in my group. But now I'm out of balance again, so I've got to take this nine and divide it by three also. Remember, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you got to do to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to take this 9, divide it by 3, and of course 9 divided by 3 is going to leave me with a 3. So I know that x is equal to 3. Remember that even though it looks like there's a bunch of stuff crowded over here on this left side of the equation, this minus 4 and this plus 4 really aren't there anymore because they canceled each other out. So now all I'm left with is an x is equal to 3. So that explains why an equation is like a balance beam and how you can do the inverse of the operations that are going on in the equation to isolate the variable, get it by itself, and figure out how much x is equal to.